Hey everyone, welcome back to science. This is Mr. Bond here. Um, we are going to be continuing today um, studying the mystery fossil that we started to talk about in our last lesson. Um, so this is going to be lesson 1.3. Um, hopefully you have completed lesson 1.2, which was the lesson before this where we started to um, think about how we, as our role in this unit as paleontologists, are going to figure out what type of a fossil this is so that we know where exactly to put it at a museum. Last lesson, we spent some time starting to think about what are things that animals have in common so that we can start to think about this fossil right here, which is it going to be most closely related to? A whale, a crocodile, um, or a wolf? So let's go ahead and jump right into today's warm-up. Uh, just a little reminder of what we did last lesson. Because for your warm-up today, what I would like you to do is go ahead and take a second to pause the video. We've got two limbs right over here, a human limb and a limb of a cat. And I want you to spend a little bit of time describing what are all of the ways that this human arm is similar to uh, the cat's arm. Um, and really use some of these labels that you see over here. You can describe the shape, you can use some numbers, all sorts of different ways that you can describe what you're seeing. Um, but go ahead and, uh, now would be a good time, I forgot to remind you at the beginning, but grab a pencil, grab a piece of paper, and we're gonna be writing some of this stuff down as we go through so that you can get your thoughts down. But just for our warm up, go ahead and pause the video, grab your pencil, grab a piece of paper, and use these two illustrations to discuss some of the similarities that you see between those two structures, the human limb and the cat limb. Okay, hopefully you jotted some of those things down. And what you can notice is that there are some pretty big similarities, even though a human and a cat aren't exactly related. And today what we're going to do is we're gonna to continue to look into some different fossils or some different skeletal structures to look for shared structures. Um, because even though a human and a cat are not the same animal, animal obviously, they do have some body structures that um, are super familiar. So for example, one of the things that we look at a lot as paleontologists is bones. Last time we discussed that animals that are no longer on the planet or who are extinct and we find their bones, that's really kind of all we have to go on. All we have to go on is those fossils. So today we're gonna to be doing a reading where we're going to be taking a look at one specific animal in general. And I'm gonna go ahead and read through the entire reading in this video. But if you would prefer and you have access to Amplify at home, you can go ahead and open up that reading and read independently if that's what you prefer. I also just wanna remind you that these are some of the tips for um, being an active reader. Active readers really are engaged in what they're doing and they're thinking about what they're reading. If you do have that digital resource at home where you can read along with me, you might also want to go through and highlight some of the words. Another great thing about that digital reading is that you can click on some of the words that you might not understand as you're reading through those. Um, and so as we're going through today, these are just some tips. If you have other things that your teacher generally requires you to do while you're doing a reading, it might be a good idea to think about those strategies as well because this reading is all about us gathering as much information as possible as scientists. So let's go ahead and jump into the reading. If you want to follow along, that's great. Remember, even if you did not open up the reading yourself, but if you are reading along, that's still a really good way to make sure that you're maintaining um, a really high reading level so that when you move on to your next grade, you'll be ready for whatever, um, whatever challenges that you have in terms of things that you read in that grade. So let's go ahead and get started. This reading is called How You Are Like a Blue Whale, which you might find something surprising in this article. If anybody tells you blue whales are the largest fish on earth, they don't know what they're talking about. Blue whales may live in the ocean with fish, but they aren't fish at all. There are many important differences between the body structures of whales and fish. Fish are covered in shiny scales, while whales have smooth skin. Fish lay eggs while whales give birth to live young. Fish fins are made of tiny bones, 
but whale flippers are supported by just a few bones. In fact, whales are mammals, just like dogs, elephants, and humans. Blue whales share many more body structures with you than they do with fish. Just as whales and fish look similar, but are actually very different, humans and blue whales look different, but have a surprising amount in common. Mother whales produce milk for their babies, just as human mothers do. Like humans, whales have lungs instead of gills. Whales can't breathe underwater. They must first come to the surface to breathe. And if you look at the bones in a human arm and the bones of a blue whale flipper, you can see that they fit together in a similar uh, in similar ways. That's kind of like, uh, just pause there for a second, that's kind of like what we were looking at in the warm-up with the uh, cat limb and the human limb. Blue whales have even have leg bones, just like humans. However, in whales, these bones are so tiny that the skin, fat, and muscles of the whale's body hide them. You might not call them real legs, but they are leftovers from a time when whales' ancestors had legs and walked on land. To figure out how two species are connected, scientists can study the skeletons of both species. Scientists studying present-day animals can use x-rays of living animals or sets of bones from animals that have died, have recently, have died recently. Paleontologists studying species that are now extinct use fossils to compare species. Comparing skeletons tells us about how species are connected because organisms get their body structures the same way they get all their other traits. Body structures are determined by the code of DNA and are passed down from generation to generation over millions of years. By comparing the skeletons of different species, scientists can see patterns of how traits have been passed down. When two species body structures are made from bones that are in the same pattern and roughly the same position in the body, scientists consider them to be shared body structures. Shared body structures in two very different species can be evidence that both species evolved from a common ancestor population that had both those structures long ago. The shared body structures found in a common ancestor population didn't necessarily look very much like they do now. They may not have even been used for the same function. To see how two descendant species are connected, paleontologists examine the fossil record. In the case of whales and humans, they look for evidence of a species that had front limbs with the same pattern of bones, structures for producing milk, and lungs for breathing air. All of these things are true of both whales and humans today. And just as a reminder, when we're talking about limbs, uh, this vocab word right here, we've already used it a couple of times today, but just remember limbs are kind of like arms and legs because we don't necessarily, um, we wouldn't consider that the blue whale, we wouldn't necessarily call their flipper um, a leg or an arm, but we do use this word limb to kind of be a general word for legs, arms, um, those fin-like structures that whales have as well. Okay, let's pick back up right here where it says paleontologists have used evidence from fossils, DNA, and other sources to conclude that the common ancestor of whales, humans, and other mammals was a tiny animal that lived about 65 million years ago. There's a really cool picture of that in a second. Fossils from that time show evidence of mouse-like creatures that had four legs with claws, long tails, and long noses, good for sniffing out insects. Similarities in body structures allow paleontologists to infer that whales, humans, and all other mammals evolved from a common ancestor similar to this tiny animal, even though it looked very little like blue whales or humans do today. Here's that crazy kind of rat-like looking creature that we we're talking about that humans and whales are related to. Just as whales have lost the function of their back legs, but still have the remnants of these bones, you also have old structures that have lost one or more of their functions. For example, our ancestors had tails and we still have short tail bones in the place where our tails used to be. The bone structures and other traits we share with whales 
provide evidence of our shared evolutionary history. The ancestor population we have in common from which we both evolved. If you think about it, you can come up with structures that we share not only with whales, but with lots of other animals too. Can you think of all the animals that have a skull, eyes, teeth, and a backbone? All living things are related and share some basic traits like cell structures and DNA. By looking at evidence in the fossil record, scientists have learned that all living things inherited cell structures from the very first single-celled organisms on Earth. That population of single-celled organisms is a common ancestor we share with all other cellular plant life on the planet. Humans, whales, fish, and billions of different species all evolved from a common ancestor population that was made of just one tiny cell and lived about four billion years ago. The family of living things is much greater than we could have imagined, connecting us not only to close relatives such as whales and other mammals, but also to fish, worms, plants, bacteria, and all other life on Earth. We all share a common evolutionary history. 